Tim Dowling hopes that by establishing a relationship between lightning intensity and the size and growth rate of the Kansas storm, he'll be able to do the same for Jupiter. What we need is a, uh, a, a fairly robust or very uh, good model of lightning and thunder. If you have a model that does a good job of predicting or, or describing Earth's weather and Jupiter's weather at the same time, then you feel much more confident about the underlying physics and your understanding. Ground forces launch a balloon into the storm to measure how fast and how high the thundercloud is rising. Above them, the T-28 approaches the most dangerous part of its mission. The massive updrafts of the storm threaten to tear the plane's wings off in a process known as wind shear. The same forces create lightning when water droplets freeze into ice particles at high altitudes. As they rise inside the storm cloud, they rub against each other, creating massive charges of static electricity. Eventually, enough charge builds up to explode as lightning. And it's getting pretty dark. I don't know what's coming next. And lightning. Very close. Lightning, lightning. The thunderstorm is now 10 miles high, the maximum possible before it hits turbulence in the atmosphere and flattens out. This is an enormous storm. Suddenly, a tornado touches down on the horizon, the supercell's frightening calling call. The second balloon launch has to be fast. Just a few miles away, the twister is already causing havoc. The T-28 has detected so-called super bolts in today's storm. On hot summer days, the atmosphere expands and thunderstorms can climb much higher than normal. This one went to a height of 10 miles with updrafts of 100 miles an hour. Tim Dowling has seen that the more room a thunderstorm has, and the faster it grows, the bigger the lightning it produces. And in his imagination, he descends into the colossal thunderstorms to the west of the Great Red Spot.